So now uh, we are going to add a generic repository in the uh, repository section. So here we have a generic repository. So just add right click on it and add a new empty file. And here we have I uh, generic repository and here we have I generic repository. Oops. Delete this and add new one. And here you can say iGenric repository.cs, that is the interface name. So, just I want to uh, paste it right now. Oops, mm, the generic repository. So, uh, here we have some codes like generic repos in the generic repository. So, here we have a uh, here we have code like that. Uh, public interface i generic repository of type t and in which you can uh, add a uh, like uh, student like uh, class like uh, subject like uh, related to the interface name i student uh, repository i class repository i grade repository i teacher repository so here we have just add i generic repository for the basic functions like at all in the get all we have some expression like function T um, that is the filter expression you can add it here and the queryable, orderable and include also and uh, disable tracking. Okay, so here we have uh, a get by ID by the object and get by ID async by using the filter op operation options, orderable and uh, include and disable tracking is also there. And here we have a add, add async, add range, update, update async, delete, delete async, delete range, exist. So here we have lots of options uh, in, inside in the generic repository. So just I'm going to add a generic repository for that implementations. So in the repository section, just have to add a new empty file. And the name is generic repository.cs. Okay. So here you can say that the name of the generic repository like that. So here we have a generic repository name that is gender, generic repository of T I disposable I generic repository of T where T is a class name. So here we have application DB context like context and inside here we have a DB set. This time I'm going to initialize that DB set with the const uh, with the context in the constructor so here we have a first to initialize con uh, context then then initialize db set and here we have a dispose so this is the dispose method and here we have a dispose the context and here we have a add identity okay now here we have a exist uh, method like the bool and a db set dot any that types of the filter so here we have a add async method like that that, that is the add the entity and delete method with the detached stage uh, state of the um, current entity and here we have a delete async method to delete the entity delete range is also there uh, in the list of this and here we have a get all method by using the disable tracking orderable filter etc so first of all iQueryable is applied on the db set then we can use disable tracking. If it is disable tracking is true, then you can say that has no tracking. And filter is not equal to null, then you can use filter. Include query is also there. Order by query is also there. And last one is the query. Okay, so here we have. So now the next one is the get by ID. So db set dot find ID and get by ID async. So here we have a filter, I queryable, include disable tracking is uh, there. Db set. Mm, as no tracking query dot filter include as well now here we have update method uh, in the t entity db set dot attach entity and uh, it detach the uh, modified the entity in the update method update async that is the same with the date method uh, only the difference between the synchronous and asynchronous right here so add range is also there so these are the uh, a generic repository now we are going to update a uh, unit of work pattern so just close all these things and add a i unit of work so now uh, we are going to add unit of work pattern 
uh, in my project so just add a new empty file and here I'm going to add a unit of work a unit of work dot cs file just I want to add and here I'm going to add a unit of work like that a unit of work generic repository of t and that is the property name generic repository t where t is a class name also here we have a save method so just I want to implement that interface that is unit of work so here we have the implementation of unit of work pattern like unit of work dot cs file and here I'm going to add unit of work so here we have unit of work that is I unit of work implemented from the I unit of work and I disposable and here I'm going to add a application DB context inside the constructor just initialize the context file and this is the dispose method and uh, here we have a generic repository of T I generic repository of T uh, generic repository of T and where T is the class name so I generic initialize that I generic repository repo new generic repository inside it you can initialize the uh, context and return the repo now after that you have to use a save method by using the save method you can just uh, changes your context file so here we have uh, context or save changes okay so everything is fine now there is the generic repository pattern and here we have a repositories now uh, just go for the web and here you can see here we have an identity project and in the identity you can see um, any page like that uh, login dot cshtml file and here you can see that already here we have application user so there is a no need to change identity user from the uh, application user so here we have an area and program.cs file is uh, looking like good and application JSON is looking like that so everything is fine now just go for the migration if you are not applying on the repositories so here we have uh, there is an option for the migration so only we have that is package manager console so add migration and that is initial after apply the migration you have to apply uh, some uh, db initializer file in your uh, in your section oops there is a no project and migration assembly so just initialize repository before going to add migration you have to must verify that is school project dot repository have a some new good packages like tools and uh, the application db context is there inside your repositories so apply, apply that you will notice that your migration is successful and after that you have to update the database command before uh, applying the database command you will see your uh, first of all check the application db context and here we have application db context and inside it you can see there we have a application user and these are you can say these are uh, the default uh, you can say uh, fluent api uh, schema uh, okay so after that you have to apply update database so apply the database you have to got build error and just go for the solution explorer because i i know that initial migration have some sql uh, server error i know that because um, inside in the repository we have uh, we had not any sql related uh, data so just going to do just control dot key and install the package that is Microsoft Entity Framework Code or SQL Server and I use local version that is 7.0.3 so everything is fine now save all and just go for again package manager and just go for update database after applying the database command you, you will notice that your database is reflected in your SQL Server object explorer wait for some times it will uh, create it. Okay, done now uh, you will see your database there is uh, 
applications app settings dot session and your database name is school project dot wap and here we have your database school project dot wap inside in the database tab school project dot wap is there okay so everything is fine now just close all tabs and go for a db initializer class so first of all add in the utilities folder you have here we have a default class that is class one so so does just delete this so now just create a new class in the utilities that is idb initializer so here we have idb initializer dot cs so uh, here we have idb initializer uh, interface and just i want to add inside it you can take only the single method that is initialize okay so uh, here we have idb initializer and just i want to use a db initializer class so add a db initializer class dot cs so inside the db initializer class you have to add the first thing that is so inside it in the db initializer class you have to just add these things like uh, db initializer idb initializer user manager uh, inside it uh, application user so just change it with the application user and application user is actually existing in the reference school project dot models and the next one is the role manager class and also here we have a user manager so just add using microsoft.asp.net code identity and application db context is actually existing in the repository class so add reference for school project dot repository now here we have application user so just in instead of app user so initialization is done now in the initialize method here we have a get pending migration command and that command is actually existing in microsoft dot entity framework core so after uh, is uh, you can say that um, pending migration is done and here we have uh, the new role that is the website role so just i want to assign a static detail of the website role so just create a new class that is website role dot website admin like employee student and teacher so just add a utilities folder and just add a new class that is website role dot cs oops it's not application user so just delete this and just i want to add a db initializer that is website role copy and make it paste inside in utilities dot cs okay so everything is clear now just go for the next section and here inside it you can say uh, here we have some roles and that class is the is used to static so uh, here we have a website admin um, teacher student and employee so save this file and you can check again in the db initializer there we have a website role dot website admin employee student and teacher and now we are going to use application user instead of app user so very well now username is admin at the rate of gmail.com and that is information is used to for the admin app user user manager dot user dot where x dot email admin at the rate of gmail.com app user app user is not equals to null user manager dot add to role async like that just initialize that uh, role to the admin by using this and there is the db initializer class now initialize that class in the uh, web project inside in the program.cs file so inside in the program.cs file you notice that here we have a app run command and after that you can just use data seeding method and under the data seeding method here we have a scope like app.service.createScope in the db initializer here we have a required service for the idb initializer 
so id initializer is not actually uh, inside it in the scope so just add first of all scope to builder uh, and also here we have a add default identity so instead of add default identity you can use add identity with the application role with the identity role okay so here we have a option is by default confirmation is true so there is a no need add uh, entity framework store and also use add default token provider dot add default token provider okay so the next one is the builder dot builder dot services dot add scoped and inside it you can use this scope okay so the next one is builder dot services dot services dot add scope you know the work variable and actually i id initializer is utility for reference so just remove the reference okay so idb initializer is initialized you know the work in initialize and uh, i think it's enough okay so everything is clear now you can see in the idb initializer is resolved now call this method data seeding just after you use static files or you can say routing files okay so uh, here we have a middleware and just i'm going to add the next utilities that is email center and you know that email center is actually existing i email center so just add a new class email center and that is dot cs and email center is implemented with i email sender and that package is actually existing in esp.nethor.identity.ui and also implement that interface with the send async and return the first time that is task dot complete a task okay so now after that initialize this email sender in the program.cs file looking like uh, this so just copy and paste i email sender implement with the email sender okay so very well now the next one is to add that is the areas inside in areas here we have just add admin areas just add a new area and here I'm going to add admin area MVC area and the area name is admin So the next one is the area exist so just copy this and in the program.cs file here we have a map controller and just I'm going to add a map controller routes 